People always wonder how you take a motor and a fuel tank out of a, a Traxxas. It's very easy. The first thing you want to do is remove the body, pinch the fuel line if you have this right here. What you want to do is just do a little screwdriver, break this line free right here. Okay, that's for your exhaust. Okay, that's a little back pressure. You tip the car up. Take your little tool and right underneath here are four screws. There's one right here. You take, you rip this out. I, usually, I would, I'd use a drill, but they don't recommend that because the high speed of the screw coming out can um, can ruin the threads inside the uh, fuel tank. A few little screws. There's four of them. There's one up there, one down here, and one right to the side of it. And the cops are here. See, I told you, Tommy. <laughs> See? Damn it. Okay, now after you take the last screw out, turn the car back. And you pull it up. You want to you want to pull this the the air cleaner off first. Okay. Pull the air cleaner off first, and, and then what you want to do is with the fuel line. You want to take the fuel line off. You got to get in there with a sometimes with a needle nose pliers. Okay, and sometimes it will not go off. Take a screwdriver, and you got to. You gotta break this free like that. When it comes off, you just wanna hook it back up here. If you put this down, fuel is gonna come out of line. Okay? So you put your screwdriver in here and you pop that little linkage off. Okay? Then take your little snipper and you just wanna snip the wire tie that holds the exhaust on so you can pull this away from it. Okay? You take your little tool. You want to take the motor off from the top. You want the motor mount to sit because it's already shimmed. So when you put it back in in place, it's all ready to go. That one out. This is the ground. The yellow wire is the ground wire, so you can't I forget to put that back on once you put this together. So you pull that baby out. There's two on this side. Take this, stick it in there, take this one out, and there's one more. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get in. You can pull the easy start uh, motor uh, just a very little bit, just to get your little tool in there, and you pull this screw out. Now usually, I disconnect the wires, but for now, I don't have to. I'm just going to pull the motor, I'm going to set it to the side, okay, and I'm just going to tighten these in the back. We, we hit a wall outside and we messed a lot of stuff out, so these are loose. We just want to tighten these up, and the thing is you can't get to them when the motor is in the, sitting in the car. So I'll tighten them up and then you can check everything. Get a little spur gear there. I'm gonna clean this up and I'll show you how to put it back together. Now when you have the motor out, it's a good idea to inspect the drive line by lifting up on the back tire and spinning it. Just check it over, make sure everything's tight. Your spur gear and no teeth are chipped. This is the time to do it. To uh, to change it if you have to. Everything looks good there. The wires all look good. When you place it in, make sure this is not out there. Because if you put the motor in, you can't get this bar back where it belongs. It has to be in front. You want to come in and under. And then set, then set your motor in. Once your motor is set in there, you want to put your, um, your ground wire back on. Let me get it over here. It's very important you don't forget the ground wire. And it goes right there. 
and you just screw it down. I don't tighten it all the way down. I tighten it down after I get them all in. That one in. This baby in. Right here. You know, it looks hard. You do it a couple times. And you can do it in your sleep. Then you tighten these two up over here if you come around the other side, Tom. See these two down here. And after I tighten this one down, I just snug it down. I stuck the one next to it. Okay, you just want to give it nice and good. You can tighten them as tight as you want. You're not going to ruin anything. And usually you're not going to strip it either. Because it, it gets a really good grip on it. They're, they're, deep, they're deep little hex. So you can really tighten them. You don't want the motor falling out when you're driving down the road. It's the last thing you want. So after you tighten it, you clip your your little line on. Just hold it right there. And you take a screwdriver, place it right behind it, and click it on. Check your mesh. Okay, you put your exhaust back on, right here, you get a little zip tie, oh, babies. Now I use a fat one, I find the, the little thin ones, the, the exhaust will slide right off, so I get a little fat one, I zip tie it right on. Take my snipper, snip it away, and I push this to the side because once you come around with this line, you don't want it to hit. Then you put the fuel tank back in. Fuel tank. Remember, this goes to the carburetor right here. And sometimes it's a little difficult to get on. So you want to take need little pliers. Just get a little grip. You don't want to grip it too hard. And just push it all the way on. You don't want to grip it too hard because if you pop a hole in it, then you have to replace it. Set that in. Take the screws that we took out. Screw it back together. Like this. Maybe right here. Hold it and tip it up. Rest it on your chest if you want. Leave it right here. And once you get one going, the rest will follow. Like I said, you could use a screw gun, but unless you're in a hurry, I just do it by hand. Plus, we're never in a hurry. That one in. They're just dude in. Right on. Like I said, I don't tighten it until you get all the screws in. And you gotta move this around a little. You don't have to move too far, because it can't go too far. And then you snug this one down. And on the bottom, there's a, there's a, those two bolts right there. To my right, I'm gonna show you in a minute. Those are the, the motor mount bolts. You want to check them. You want to check everything over and make sure everything's tight. You know, it won't hurt. It'll hurt not to have it tight. And we, we did these two boogers. This one up here. 
You don't want to over tighten this. You don't want to strip the, uh, the threads in the uh, plastic fuel cell. Tighten this one up. Back down. You got to make sure you hook this line back up because it will be very hard, if impossible, to start it without any pressure. This pushes the fuel through the um, through your fuel line from your exhaust pressure. So, like I said, take a needle nose, flip it back on. What I always do, I forget to unlock this, and we'll see if it starts. Get an easy start. Your controller on. Okay. filter back on, I mean the uh, air filter, clip it back in, right like so, put your little pin in, and that is how you take a motor out, a fuel tank out, whether you're doing a spur gear, checking the rear end uh, bolts that hold it in, whether you're changing a shock, if a lot of times that little nut is hard to get at, with this tool, you can make it long, or you can make it short. Get in there. If if sometimes you have a problem, take this fuel tank out. It's not bad. And now uh, to check the motor out. Motor mount. It's on the bottom. These are the bolts. It's tight. It's tight. And there's one over here. It's tight. It's tight. Okay, and that's how you remove a motor, a fuel cell, and like I said, you could check whether you're doing a spur gear, whether you're doing a clutch valve, whether you're replacing the starter, you know, it's all done the same way. You got it.